Hello folks, welcome back. Star Wars The Bear Awakens, Episode 5, It All Comes Back to Star Wars. So what happened the other day was uh, Laura Lee and I just started a conversation and I decided that it was worthy of recording. So I just kind of jumped us right in. Um, didn't do much of an introduction, so this is going to be the introduction for it. So I hope you enjoy this one again. It all comes back to Star Wars. This is essentially something that I've uh, used as a phrase for my children growing up. Every time we would run across a situation that they'd experience in life, um, whether it was something difficult or somebody was being a jerk to them or whatever it was, I was able to relate a certain episode or a certain scene in a Star Wars movie or the Clone Wars series or any of the things that we've done, and I was able to relate that to them, kind of equating it to the situation that they're experiencing at the time. And at the end of our conversation, I'd say, see, son, it always comes back to Star Wars. So it's kind of interesting how a lot of our perspective in life can actually be connected to the Star Wars concept. And that only really reinforces this whole process of the podcast. The fact that we're trying to connect the concept of the Force and what George Lucas created in the universe along with our understanding and our taking part in the God consciousness as well. So we hope you enjoy this. Um, it was a lot of fun to record this because a lot of it was on the fly. We didn't have any bullet points or um, any documents to read off of. I just asked questions and Laura Lee and I just kind of ran with it. So enjoy it and we will talk to you again soon. So I always tell you that it all comes back to Star Wars. I tell everybody that. Not everybody, but anybody that knows anything about Star Wars and me. So I've always told my kids about this. But have we come across anything? Have I ever said anything to you and then you thought in your head, geez, that's just like Yoda or some stupid stuff like that? I'm sure I do, but I'm pretty much a fly by the seat of your pants kind of person. So I may not even remember verbatim <laughs> ever. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> um, but I do know that when, when we're having conversations or when there's something being said, I know that it's a relatability concept for us Yeah, because we do like Star Wars so much and we love watching it and the content and how it does. We look for the similarities in our lives and where it is for, for us. And, and I know for me, for the God consciousness part of it, I'm always looking to see where I am in God. Yeah. And so we relate everything to, well, what does that look like? Do you think he's, you know, we know that it's not about God in Star Wars, yet it's about a consciousness, a force. Yeah. So when I'm finding funny things that happen in our life, it's like poking fun at you. Yeah. Well, so I'll God. come up with something. <laughs> I can't do the Jar Jar Banks kind of thing that you do, but. Right. Right. I find a lot of us is just poking fun and I'll say something just off the top of my head and I'll probably never remember it again. Yeah, well, that's what I'm here for is to try and remember all that stuff. So that's that I good because your memory is much better than mine. <laughs> well, I mean, one of the things I think has been really dynamite for our transition in the last couple of years is, is just our ability to watch the Clone Wars or the movies or the YouTube videos like we were doing today and listening to everybody's interpretation of what Star Wars brings. But then we can stop in the middle of it and say, well, well, you know, this is kind of what I think it is more like. Or do you see how God kind of plays in this? Do you see how George Lucas is kind of throwing that zinger in there to, to kind of disguise a little bit of... Disguise oh, the force as God? Yeah, or disguise the God as the force. or what, yeah. yeah. I mean, the way we can take any conversation or many of our conversations in a day and just kind of roll it out, and say, well, yeah, it's kind of like, uh, you know, how Anakin does this or how Yoda does that or how Darth Sidious is being a little twisted. I mean, I can go through my life and find many Darth Vaders. I can find many people that have been in the light, have gone dark and have come out. I mean, it's kind of like any kind of person who is healing through addictions or has healed through them or people that have gone through really tough times in a relationship. To most of us in society, we can always, yeah. it's a relatability concept. The spirituality concept isn't as relatable because people don't understand and had religion crammed down their throats. The concept with Star Wars is that the similarities are just incredible on somebody who's on the path to find where they fit in life, society, and their spiritual understandings. Right. 
So I do come across even in myself, you know, you mentioned the matter of addiction. For me, there was absolutely times where I was Anakin. And then there was that At transition. What level? At what level were you Anakin? Uh, probably about the same the time child? period. The child. The child. Yeah, because I started using drugs when I was very young. So for me, it was going from an Anakin state of absolute, and I'll always say this, it's survival mode. What do we know when we don't know anything? Mm -hmm. We survive. And then I go into wanting to be good, but the lifestyle that I'm choosing is not what Congruent people would, the, would call it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So I, I decided to become the, the Darth Vader in my own story, always fighting my emotions and loss and those struggles. And I don't think I'd ever attempted to be a Sidious on an, any level, you know, but you could see. You can see moments in our yeah. lives as individuals, how we could have popped right out and became like this. You're going to do it this way and I'm, I'm going to manipulate you. You. I'm gonna I'm gonna use things and and hook you in through manipulations and you won't know that that I'm doing this but I'm gonna do it and get my way well I think we do that as parents yeah. you know we'll throw out that guilt trip you know <laughs> clean your room or you right. know I want things done this way and I know that I've absolutely been guilty of it and being a control freak in the essence of who I am I'm sure you know I have to look at that realistically and say that yeah you know what I probably did play the Palpatine part right. You know, in the scheme of my world. Now, you remember we had a conversation maybe a month or so ago. <laughs> of course, in my timeline, it could have been two years. But uh, about a month <laughs> or so ago, fact. we had a conversation and we talked about the Comic-Con. Remember you asked me a question. You said, hey, what about those people that go to the Comic-Con and they all dress up? What do you think they're dressing up for? We talked for probably maybe an hour or two hours and I was hoping I would have recorded it. But Shame, shame, Yeah, I know. Shame. But the idea behind it is when we look at people from just in that scenario, people that dress up, that really go to town and they just want to be part of that world. They want to be part of Star Wars. And you kind of wonder at points, is it that they're just playing or are they just trying to fit in somewhere? Are they trying to become something that they're not? And then we talk a lot about the mask or the veil. You know, we're always trying to pretend. We're not always, but we as a species tend to um, not necessarily provide our honest being to public. Well, I think social media is a, an aspect of that as well. We personify this person who is living life to its fullest in laughter and joy because that's what we want people to see. And the truth right. is, most of us are really struggling. So, I mean, Comic-Con was an interesting kind of conversation because people are always wanting to be something besides themselves. Right. We're never satisfied with the self. They want the Ahsoka because Ahsoka to them was somebody strong, strong. young, vulnerable. And beautiful. Beautiful, but strong. And at the same time, always needing that big brother or needing father figure. or Needing yeah. somebody to say, hey, yeah. did you know, does this sound good to you? Right. And then also having that martyrdom because of wanting to protect she mm -hmm. was wanting to protect. So when you look at the whole concept, I think we do go off course a little bit sometimes because of how beautiful the understanding is. When you're looking at people who want to be other than who they are, it's all of us. We always want to be in a different position unless we're, you know, hitting high on the hog. And I don't know too many people, even with financially abundant situations in their life, that are ultimately that happy. Right. So when it comes to our spiritual path, when you look at Bear and my life, and I can probably only speak for myself, but I look for every situation that I'm going through, and that does go minute by minute. And for some, it may be very mundane or why bother. But for me, my ultimate path is to be spiritually sound and centered for me and God. Right. So when I look at all these concepts that we talk about, what I find in myself is each moment I'm evaluating. Am I being a master Am I being a Jedi, the ultimate truth of what a Jedi might represent or should represent, and that's being absolutely centered and doing the right things? Am I being that person? Am I being Anakin in that moment? Am I forcing my will on others and being Darth Sidious? Am, am I being the manipulator and being a Palpatine? Right. What role am I playing in life? And each moment I find myself venturing uh, sporadically. Sometimes I'm centered, sometimes I'm absolutely not centered, sometimes things have not gone my way and I've decided I want to be a Darth Vader. And, and, it, and it would be almost foolish on an individual's part to believe that they can always be centered, right? Absolutely. Because we are humans and humans provide us with a plethora of situations that are going to test us, constantly test us. You know, you can go through a list of things that'll just tweak you. 
you know, someone accidentally cutting you off in line at a store or on the road or, you know, people saying certain things or people crossing on the crosswalk when they're not supposed to cross and you're just driving and trying to be safe. And what does that make us feel? How does that take us out of our centeredness and take us out of the Jedi and bring us to the Sith, so to speak, <laughs> right? So Because we feel that everybody should be the same as we are. Yeah, because we're foolish enough to believe that. We're foolish enough to believe that everyone should be something when we've got to really focus on ourselves as individuals anyway. It doesn't matter what anyone else does because at no point in time what anybody else does, says, or thinks is any of our business. Is any of our business, but it also has nothing to do with how we are as a person, as a being. At no point in time can anyone make us do anything. Everything is a choice on our own. Even if you take the proverbial if someone put a gun to your head. If someone puts a gun to your head, they're going to give you choices. Do this or this. And you get to choose. We get to choose. If someone hits you with a car accidentally, something you can't control. You see it as a gray area. However, yeah. is it really? Because in each step that we make in life, whether we've made the choices to be Darth Vader or Anakin mm -hmm. or Sidious or being a Jedi, we've made choices maybe five minutes ago, maybe 10 minutes ago, maybe a year ago that may have years ago, yeah. brought that absolute situation to pass now yeah. i mean look at palpatine and such a manipulator oh my gosh yeah. but his plans are not for the now therefore a bigger broader yeah, picture he's, he's doing things in the thought processes to if i do this today 10 years from now that's going to happen exactly and I, that's how that's what happens yeah. in our lives just because we've had an accident we we consider it just an accident there was no planned event in it mm. The facts are there's a situation in our life that has led us to that very moment. Right. We've what made lesson? choices. We made choices. Everything we do every day, all the time, there's a choice that we make, whether it's from waking up when the alarm goes off or snoozing it or putting or a like sock me, on. Or like an hour alarm, and a half before. Or an hour and a half. <laughs> or, or whatever it may be, right? I mean, do we want to eat that scoop of ice cream or do we want to have those uh, right. Brussels sprouts or salad, right? We make a choice on everything. Just us talking together right here. When I'm looking around and talking, I'm choosing to put my eyes somewhere and focus on something. It creates our existence because we're choosing in an open, that's uh, the free will, right? Mm. The free will to make choices. So we're doing this all the time. When we want to look at somebody and see the God in somebody, we choose to do that. If we want to look at somebody and judge them and say, wow, why are they wearing that? Why did they do that today? Who do, who do they think they are? You know, we go into a choice and we get to go down the dark path if we choose to. And that's what we saw in the Star Wars world. The Star Wars galaxy was uh, George Lucas's way of saying, look, man, we're all people. We're, we're all beings. We make choices and we make mistakes and we do the right thing and we do the wrong thing. He says, but ultimately we're all there and we all have this connection with this thing called the force, or as we like to put it, the God consciousness. So we're all making choices about what we want to do all the time, all day. Even in our sleep, we're doing the same thing. So it's pretty powerful to be able to see the connections between human life and the Star Wars universe. I think it's beautiful, for especially for us, you know, Star Wars geeks. And I know there is plenty of you out there who are more knowledgeable than I am. And Bear's been, you know, my kind of pilot on showing me more of what Star Wars really meant. And, and I, I do find that I do apply it daily. I'm along with my walk and finding where I am in each moment. So, yeah, it plays a big role in our lives. Right. So the concept of it all comes back to Star Wars. It's just real simple. We're building the relationship between Star Wars and our lives. And we only do it because it's fun. But it also helps us stay in the balance and to recognize stuff more. We throw things across at each other all the time so that we can kind of guide each other hand in hand just because I have more knowledge doesn't mean I know more. What I have is I have a knowledge that's in my head about Star Wars. She has, Laura Lee has knowledge about life in her life, in her path that was completely different than mine. That I may not ever comprehend what she got to go through. But when we can kind of find a common ground and say that, you know, Jar Jar Binks, I remember being that klutzy idiot when I was six years old. And she can say, yeah, when I was 17, I had this time where... I felt like I was wanting to be special and important, so I made a decision that I thought was right, and it come to find out it kind of caused a rift or something. 
So we get to have this uh, back and forth because we understand our lives are the lives we have, but we can kind of find a common ground, a common bond. That's why people are watching Star Wars. That's why people are YouTubing Star Wars stuff, and they're all excited about the next episode, and they're all jacked up about The Mandalorian and stuff. There's millions of people that are actually in tune, connecting with us at this moment when we're listening to ourselves. It's relatability. Yeah. Yeah. Common ground, the commonality. I'm different from you and I'm different from everybody that listens to this, but we're all the same because we all see the same things. We're watching the same stuff. We just see things and perceive things differently. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you very much. That was a nice little quick uh, podcast for everyone to gravitate to. Thanks, Bear. Thanks, guys. Thank you all very much for hanging out with us. Stay tuned for our next episode. Not sure exactly what we're going to call that one, so that's uh, that's the fun of this. So enjoy your world, folks, and as always, may the force be with you. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> I can edit that because we already have that recorded, but but thanks. That's what made me feel